in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 30 to 32 isn't it very interesting that when it had to do with oneness the only example the apostle could get to explain the extent of our oneness with Christ is marriage it says for we are members of his body of his flesh and of his bones watch this 31 for this cause this understanding for this cause the intention to use marriage to exemplify you see that the mystery between Christ and his church shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife and they too shall be called what it didn't say they shall be called strangers who have been joined with a ring it took more than a ring to bring them together a ring was just a token are we together 32 it says this is a great mystery that means marriage among the many things it seeks to provide is the most graphic representation of the extent of the oneness of the believer with Christ are we together the same way when a man gets married to his wife she changes her name and begins to bear his son name am I right on that you now call her Mrs. his name Give me that scripture please the bible now said it is a great mystery he says paul is saying but this is not marriage seminar i'm speaking about christ and the church christ acting as the husband and the church now as the wife i have taught you this that theologically speaking is called the doctrine of interpenetration is the mystery by which two entities become one different people but now bound by that covenant in ancient times they had what they called a salt covenant a salt covenant was a way of describing the depth of unity that could exist between two people so if two people were to step into a covenant and they meant business everyone would come with a measure of their salt watch this now and they would pour it in a container this will pour this will pour and then they would shake it and mix it together the condition for that covenant to break is for everybody to pick the salt they brought are we together now inseparable and the church is married to a responsible husband for starters he came to die for you even while you were yet a sinner Number two, he's exalted and he carried you along. Are you seeing responsibility? Number three, while he's seated, he's still interceding. Oneness with Christ. Oneness with Christ. Oneness with Christ. Let's look at a few scriptures. John 14, 17. John 14, 17. John 14, 17. Watch this. Our oneness with Christ is sponsored by the presence of the Spirit of the Living God. Watch this. The Spirit of the Living God is the principal factor that provides the basis for our oneness with God. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Why? Because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you Jesus is speaking now he's telling them about an experience that would happen shortly for he dwelleth with you now he shall be in you John 17 and verse 20 
Jesus is speaking concerning our oneness. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them which also shall believe on me through thy word. Aha, uh -huh, 21. It says that they may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee. Are we together? That they may also be in us. Look at the description of the oneness. I am in you, you are in me. Now for the believer in Christ that he is now part of us as far as that oneness is concerned. That the world may know that thou hast sent me. 22. It says, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be one as we are one. First Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17. First Corinthians 6, 17. Let's read together. Very simple expression. Ready? One to read. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. One more time. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Do you know what that means? That everything that makes Jesus, Jesus, both in his earth work and his glorified state, he has freely shared it with you through his spirit. The implication of your being one with Christ, listen carefully, is that number one, you are a recipient of his life. When he says, I am the vine and you are the branches, it is the same nutrient that flows from the vine to the branches and then expresses itself as the fruit. You know what the branch is? The fruit bearing part of the vine. You want to know how healthy the vine is? Look at the branches and then the fruits that come from them. Romans chapter 8 and verse 11. Romans 8, 11. Please write. Romans 8, 11. The Bible says, But if the spirit of him that raised up Christ from the dead dwelleth in you, it says, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body. Look up, please. It is my prayer and I will tell you, I still continue to press into this as a person. It is my prayer that we come into the full comprehension of this mystery. I believe that before Jesus Christ comes, there will be a practical manifestation of dominion over sickness and diseases it looks like this dimension of dominion i submit to you for some reason it looks like the church has declined in working in this dominion for various reasons there are scientific reasons there are climatic reasons atmospheric reasons all kinds of things the kind of food that we eat but i can tell you the bible says that the, the implication of our oneness with christ is that something can happen to your body that stops it from deterioration and that you walk in health and vitality eating well is wonderful but that is not the reason why the bible tells you you are you should you are free of sickness i believe in eating well I believe in uh, all the medical things, but I've, I've cautioned us, don't be careless. We have doctors here. If you are not feeling well, go to the back, go and meet them. They will treat you and you are still a Christian. Are we together? We are not going to be foolish in addressing spiritual things and allow people to die. The doctors are not antichrist. While your faith is growing to stand and you know, at, to, in a position now where you can be free of sickness. Doctors, hospitals, and medicine are expressions of God's mercy. So please, don't feel bad. Don't go and swallow drugs in secret and come and tell lies and say, I don't take drugs. That's not the issue. Thank God for your understanding, but let's be truthful and be matured and take away any kind of childishness out of the body of Christ. Treat yourself with honor. Go to the hospital with honor. Take responsibility over your body. But at the back of everything you do, please do not ignore the Spirit of God. The Bible says if that same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, if that same Spirit, that same Spirit, not another, that raised Christ from the dead dwells, that means if it is true that God did not lie, if it is true that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead 
dwells in you he says that same spirit shall quicken the word quicken there means administer vitality health to your mortal body by the same spirit i submit to you that the body of christ is yet to come into the fullness of this revelation there are people here and there who have caught it but if we are to be very honest there's nothing embarrassing about it it is a dimension we can press to with faith and understanding god does not lie this bible you see cannot be broken let god be true and every man including our experiences be liars whilst we trust god for the ministry of doctors we must get to a point where we carry this consciousness i am one with christ someone say i'm one with christ because we live in very evil days you will see a teenager headache headache and the next thing they will tell you they found a tumor there are we together and you are wondering how old is this child who was a healthy child I hope you know that some of these demonic things are devilish are we together i heard about someone who got up in the morning i mean played around and went to bed got up in the morning and was completely blind no symptom no progression completely i've heard of people who within a span of one to two months they just had an acceleration of cancer cells until it got to stage four just like that I believe in this healing wave I believe in the vitality of the saints we don't contend for divine health because of fear of death death has already been conquered based on our positional advantage the Bible says to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord it didn't say to be traveling somewhere to be present with the Lord so whether in this life or beyond this life we are victorious and let me encourage you if you've lost any loved one to sickness bodily deterioration accidents activities of terrorists etc please find hope based on the integrity of scripture find hope and comforts that to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord nonetheless we are given the assignment to keep progressing in our knowledge until we attain a point where we can dare sickness we can look at these evil spirits that were sent from hell i wish i had the time i would have shown you the spirits that were released to the earth in the book of revelation they were released to the earth and they were given certain assignments kill a third of the people it was a mandate and then there was a rider upon a pale horse having the pair of balances and the bible says his name is death and his assignment is to kill men no devil will take my life before my time in the name of jesus christ many people are afraid now because it looks like scripture cannot be trusted again when it has to do with this issue of divine health and longevity these are the scariest areas for believers right now because it looks like there is a growing dominion of sicknesses and diseases over believers are we together to a point where it seems unusual right now for an average person to be free of any sickness it looks unusual but I submit to you in the name of Jesus Christ that before Christ returns there will be a manifestation of this revelation there are saints of God without pretense and lying who will walk in the reality of this resurrection power if you believe that shout amen What's that beautiful song you sang? By your spirit I will rise From the ashes of defeat I don't know the other part, sing it for me
listening to Papa Kenneth, Co Kenneth Copeland and you can imagine that man in his 80s and he's one of the people that have represented an inspiration to the body of Christ. Sickness and health is one area you cannot fake for too long. If you are lying eventually, age mixed with wickedness and demon spirits will catch up with you. The Bible talks about Joshua and Caleb. These were men who were strong and even in their 80s, their natural strength was not abated. Is it not in your Bible? Hmm. By your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. I have read from church history books a few men who walked upon this earth and demonstrated that this thing called divine health the dominion of the saints over spirits that afflict is a reality please do not I'm going to pray for people before we end up who are having all kinds of plagues of sickness but you don't know how angry I am in my spirit not just because of my call by the privilege of what I do, I have been to many hospitals praying for people. I have seen how sickness can literally trap the life of, of not just the victim but the entire family. That every, they keep building projects at a halt, they keep education as a halt, everything must wait to honor that spirit. is resurrecting me that's what is happening do, do, listen listen do you know how wicked sickness is it does not care whether you are Muslim Christian whether you are a baby I've prayed for babies that I can how wicked can Satan be Just when you build your house and you want to rejoice with your children, you get up in the morning and one part of your leg cannot walk. I was shown one of our dear ladies, she probably may be here. Something happened to the father and he said he just felt pain on his leg. And the next thing, when I saw the picture, it was like twice the size of a normal leg and everything was already rotting. Don't tell me it just happened. There is something these spirits know that the church is yet to know. And the secret is not just in bold face. Somebody must be given the mandate to reintroduce this thing to the body of Christ with authenticity. And I'm praying that God will be able to trust us. That in our generation we'll be able to say we have found something. We have among the keys that we have been given. That we can administer the same way you can minister the baptism the same way you can teach a person from being poor to be prosperous the same way you can mentor a person john g lake the bible says at the time of john lake in spokane that they had healing rooms it's in your history books they would keep people there for 30 days under a strong influence of the healing anointing and afterwards you will find them walk great men like Kenneth E. Hagen Charles and Francis Hunter E. W. Kenyon name them ah. by your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat the resurrected king is resurrecting me much of a blessing you will be if you can heal just one sickness just one category effortlessly you know how many people on earth they will look for you they will pay to see you they will cry to do whatever that is how degraded man has become 
we need a restoration we are tired of talk and claims of unverified stories authentic manifestations of the healing power of Jesus not just from one person or one man of God two or three men of God are too small to handle this urgency we need a widespread manifestation of the healing power of Jesus all across this nation across Africa one with Christ if that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead the dead body of Jesus was lying on the tomb and the Spirit of God came and entered that tomb and resurrected that body now the Bible says that same spirit lives in you listen listen just help those under the anointing listen carefully hear me the bit that we have gotten is what is the the little revelation that we have scratched is what is producing what people call an outstanding ministry right now and yet compared to what we still have to learn and know and manifest we are still toddlers as far as understanding when it comes to the healing ministry I submit to you on earth today there are great men but there are few people that can beat their chest and say generals of healing let's not lie to ourselves you know what it means to be a general you have mastered the dynamics of reproducing a result under any condition there are generals of prosperity there are generals of teaching but my goodness the world is waiting 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 and let me tell you church of the Lord Jesus Christ if we do not validate this oneness by the results that we produce a day will come familiar spirits will partner with men and women and you will begin to see similitudes of many healings that are antichrist and no matter what you say about it it will not make any difference because if your child is dying and you're a responsible parent you will look for anything within your power to keep that child alive while on one hand we are shouting and telling people don't go to Habalis, have you been able to be a worthy alternative? A man who healed someone's son, someone's daughter, healed the whole family through divination of HIV. Now you are saying you should not go to that man. Jesus heals. Prove it. And at the end of it, we finish the service and share the grace. And then we boast and say three people were healed. Out of how many? And have those three been verified? Uh, listen, I'm not being, we thank God for what God is doing so far. But let me tell you the truth. When I return back, in spite of the mighty things that God does here, I know what an avalanche of the power of God can do. There are a few things we have laid hold on by the grace of God. We must press to reveal the reality of this oneness. John G. Lake, when the plague hit the city where he was, people were dying. And if you contacted that plague, just like a coronavirus was, it would kill you there, the foam from the mouth. History records. And he was helping the people to bring out the dead bodies and those who were affected. And the medical people warned him. They said, be careful. You are putting your life at risk. And they were right. And he said, no. Then it, an experiment was performed, we're told, where they put the foam from the mouth of one who was dead. And they found out, I was told, that the whole, the whole thing just died like that. They couldn't find anything alive. It couldn't affect him. Can I tell you, there are arrows that fly by day that are being released to the earth that we have not seen. There are spirits that I'm, I'm not making you afraid, except you don't believe the Bible. There are sicknesses that will not have names. Medical science is coming to a point of honest admission right now that there are things that their machines cannot diagnose. Are we together now? mysterious occurrences satanic manifestations just like that 
a child wakes up in the morning and that's the end of it cannot see cannot walk cannot talk they go to the hospital and they find out that that child has some feet problem some heart problem just like that someone just collapses on the ground and they find out Abba. church of the Lord Jesus Christ preaching is powerful but you see what we preach as resurrection today was not a sermon it was an activity that happened are we together the times I have seen the manifest power of God to lift to heal I have been blessed watching those people who were healed you don't know what it means for a family when they experience the authentic power of God to heal verified verified that someone who was diagnosed stage 4 cancer the person goes to the hospital and you run all the tests and they say you are cancer free completely what 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 do you know how many sermons will come out of that testimony the world is tired of the lots of noise that we keep making we need to understand that our oneness with Christ if true has an implication that we must demonstrate here and now is someone learning by your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat the resurrected King is resurrecting me in your name I come alive to declare your victory the resurrected King is resurrecting me some of you as you are listening to me right now there are sick people in your family some of you as you came here now you are here with all kinds of death sentences celebrating Easter without experiencing the power is a mockery of God to the world did you hear what I said celebrating Easter without the power made manifest is a mockery of God to the world the power component the ability to validate that resurrection write this down write this down write this down write this down my spirit is fired up now write this down please play the strings for me watch this I wrote something down here by reason by reason of our positional advantage and our oneness with Christ we now have access to the following please write by reason of our positional advantage and then our oneness with Christ through his spirit we have access to the blessings of his blood right please we have access to the blessings of his blood his life his word his name his presence and his power let me take it again by reason of our exalted position our positional advantage and then our oneness with Christ we have access to the blessings of his blood the blessings of his life the blessings of his word the blessings of his name the blessings of his presence the blessings of his power so when you say you are a believer you are one who in Christ has been exposed to these forces of victory that you have access to the blessings that come with his blood his life I repeat his word his name his presence and his power write this down our mandate please start this statement 
it is one of the major statements that I came tonight to tell you. If you can summarize everything I have taught you, it is captured in this statement you are about to write. Our mandate is not complete if we only celebrate the resurrection. Write that down. You will still continue the statement, but write it down. Our mandate is not complete if we only celebrate the resurrection. Our mandate is not complete if we only celebrate the resurrection. The greater task is to be validators of his resurrection. Our mandate is not complete if we only celebrate the resurrection as a ritual, a moment in time, March or April. The greater task is to be validators of his resurrection. And that is the topic of this discussion tonight. Validators of his resurrection. How? By revealing the kingdom, the power, and the glory of this Jesus. This Jesus we claim died. This Jesus we claim rose again and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. The greater task is to be validators of his resurrection by revealing the power, the kingdom, the power, and the glory of Jesus. Listen to me. Easter is not a ceremony. No, there is no power in the observance of the dates. The real way to celebrate Easter is to become validators of that resurrection. When you are a validator of that resurrection, you are celebrating Easter every day, not just one day. Yes, of course, it may be profitable to commemorate those times just to keep us in the knowledge that Christ did this. And if that is our understanding, that is fine. But if it's just a blind Christian ritual, then it will soon turn to idolatry because in itself it will not have any power. The real power of Easter is that we obtain grace at this time to be validators of his resurrection by ensuring that from us and through us there will be a revelation of the kingdom the power and the glory of Jesus the kingdom the power and the glory of Jesus revealed through the saints to be a blessing to the world is the true essence of Easter Acts chapter 4 and verse 33 I'd like us to read it together one to read and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all it took more than celebration to give witness the Bible says with great power let hope let it rise darkness trembles in your holy light let hope rise darkness trembles in your holy light this is the prophetic word for someone let hope rise Darkness trembles in your light. Hear me. God did not send us here to just be celebrators of an event. We have been given a mantle and a mandate from heaven that as far as you are alive, that this territory will not forget God by the abundance of the witness that your life provides. The Bible calls us validators. There is a claim that God brought Jesus to prove. And we are alive today, here and now, to be validators of those claims. When Jesus came in Luke chapter 4, he entered the temple and they gave him the scroll of Isaiah. And he flipped to where it was written, Isaiah 61. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he hath anointed me. 
to preach the gospel to the poor he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captive and the recovery of sight to them that are bruised the bible says when he was done the eyes of all of them were fastened upon him and they looked at him and he said this scripture is fulfilled in your ears and he looked through the congregation the healing ministry according to Luke's synoptic account was one of the first validations he saw a man with a withered hand and he said stretch your hand and that man stretched his hand no assumption no whether you were healed or not healed Jesus for you he went to Cana of Galilee according to John chapter 2 the first miracle recorded according to John's synoptic account the Bible says wine had finished but watch Jesus he was right there in that occasion and he said don't worry there is something we can do the presence of the kingdom is here and let me show you the power and the glory that comes with this kingdom fill six vessels and fetch the water take it to the rulers We claim that we have the same spirit. We pray in tongues and shout in tongues. But the benefit, the proof of that oneness is not there. There's nothing wrong with our prayer and all of that. It's only that, do you know why the world keeps looking at the Christian faith as a nuisance to civilization? Because respectfully speaking, we are full of activities, energetic activities that demand our time, money, and investment. But there is an evidence that the world is waiting for. Allah parusiata. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, God has not called us to be a continuation of this limitation. The body of Christ has tried, but we must step up the bar. Easter is a reminder. Easter is a wake-up call. He said, awake thou that sleepest. It is not just a time to eat chicken and turkey. That's wonderful. But beyond that, you must go back and ask yourself, am I a true validator or am I just a, a, a person discussing Romans chapter 8 and verse 18 it says for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us 19 says for the earnest expectation of the creator waited for the manifestation of the sons of God verse 20 says for creation was made subject to vanity not willingly but by reason of him that subjected the same in hope 21 says because the creature itself shall also be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the saints hear me everyone who is listening to me here in Zaria all the overflows outside our global family there is a mandate and a mantle upon your life to be a validator Easter is not just a time to say wow we finished Easter now the next one is Christmas we keep recycling these rituals and they become burdensome rituals with no power they can even become hedonistic activities that end up most people reject Jesus during these festive periods because their lives are full of practices that are even anti-resurrection most times around these periods all people do is just to dance to eat and to drink and it's even those who don't know Jesus that celebrated most we look to Yahweh Yahweh I hope is Yahweh Yahweh we look to Yahweh we look to Yahweh
Ephesians 2 10 then we'll go to 3 10 Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 then we'll do 3 and verse 10 the Bible says for we are his workmanship say amen, amen. created in Christ Jesus the same way a black a blacksmith would sit down and begin to fashion a farming tool because of the kind of work it will do are we together now there was a time I was looking for a particular video and then I stumbled across this video where a very heavy steel materials are created that crush metals cars and all of those things and you, you would watch them squeeze a car squeeze anything at all just squeeze it like a piece of paper as it passes through and I said that's it so the Bible says we are his workmanship you were fashioned the nature of your build tells you your assignment. The nature of your build. God took time to pour himself into you. The Bible says created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God had before ordained. So our good works is consistent with his predeterminate counsel. For ordained that we should walk in them. Give us chapter 3 and verse 10. To the intent. What intent? Paul said unto me, I'm the least of all the saints, but this grace was given to me to teach men the unsearchable riches of Christ to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church, the ecclesia, the manifold wisdom of God. There is a dimension of God's grace and power and kingdom and glory and wisdom that the world is waiting for. Listen to me. It takes more than being an inventor to take the world. I can tell you one area where the world is desperately crying for is dominion over time, dominion over wicked spirits that afflict men. This is trouble that both the rich, the poor, the educated, the uneducated, Africa and the West. The world has not been able to come up with a permanent solution of dominion over wicked spirits. It is the one thing that puts all of us in the same position, naturally speaking. The wealthy man is looking for solution for his health, his longevity and his life. The weak man is looking for the same thing. In Africa, we are crying. In Europe, we are crying. In America, we are crying. Because when it has to do with this one, the answer is not on earth. The answer only resides with he that is seated on the throne. Jesus walked upon the earth and demonstrated invincibility. These spirits cried. They begged him, begged him, don't cast us from here. And with one word, he said, go. And that was it. We sing all kinds of songs that implicate us. What manner of man is Jesus? We clap and we dance. He made the blind to see. And while we're saying it, almost every case we're calling has the people represented there. And we finish preaching and we say, let's share the grace. We organize all kinds of things, miracle services, healing services. And I, I'm not downplaying it. We're doing our best with what we know. But I'm telling you, we need to raise the bar with all honesty and reintroduce the power of Jesus to the world again. They have a right to reject our Jesus until we can prove he's alive. Not say he's alive. Not sing he's alive. Not argue that he's alive. An evidence is the end of all arguments. The assignment of an evidence is that it comes as a token of truthfulness. When you go to the court of law, it is not your noise the judge is waiting for. They may listen to you patiently or impatiently, but when they get tired, they ask you, do you have your evidence? That is why arguing in the secular, you must come with statistics, facts, and figures. When you come and say, this one is happening, they say, prove it. Have you done a thorough research? Have you come up with statistics? So when we travel across the nations and we dare people and say Jesus is Lord, they have a right to sit down and say, what do you mean he is Lord? Jesus is Lord. I need that Lord over the condition of my child. Watch Jesus. He meets a woman at Nain and says, I, it's, a, it's an expensive statement to say I am Lord. Bring that coffin down. And he lifts that dead body. He goes 
to meet Jairus's daughter and he was interrupted by the woman with the issue of blood by the time he's done with her Jairus's daughter is dead and he says no problem with me there's nothing like too late get out of the room Talita Kumi little girl I say unto you arise Naaman was a man who was leprous it was not a parable and the prophet casually without hoping it will work go and wash seven times and you will know there is a prophet in Israel today we call ourselves prophets and apostles and thank God we are trying but ah in the name of Jesus and in the name of honesty we need to draw this bar and stretch it wide enough in 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 the days of the Bible if you were called a prophet it was almost like you were God when a donkey got missing after three days they said let's not be fools looking around there is a man we know not there is a place they stopped the issue of location they said there is a personality that embodies the possibilities of God this mysterious entity called Samuel that his word does not fall to the ground whatever it is between him and God we do not know but we know that this is a human being and a half let's go and meet him and they were on their way watch this and true to their word as soon as they saw Samuel the donkey started going home what kind of a wicked donkey is that that will allow his owners to suffer and then as soon as you meet a prophet the donkey was on his way going back home mm. may God take us to these realms can you imagine that the New Testament was founded upon better promises and yet we are yet to touch and scratch that dimension there is something this man knew about God that we need to pray that God will impart to our lives and our generation otherwise we will continue to mock the integrity and the potency of God's Word there are all kinds of movements editing the Bible downplaying saying God did not mean this because when you don't have proof for many years you have to create a theology to, to downplay what happened are we together the apostle was teaching and somebody died and he said sorry he went out raised the person brought the person back and the lecture continued Kai. Oh, let revival come again let it come again let it come whatever made us become this dead whatever made us celebrating spiritual mediocrity from place to place there is there is there is a high calling a high standard are we together Samuel looks at Saul and says let us go up and I will tell you what is in your heart is it not because the Lord has anointed you to be captain over his army and he said three things will happen to you because you met me number one the donkey that has been missing on your way back you will find out it has been discovered number two you will meet three men holding two loaf of bread they will salute you and give you which you should receive number three you will come to the garrison of the Philistines he says and that when you come there the hand of the Lord will come upon you the Spirit of God will be upon you and you will prophesy look at the man Elijah resting upon the mountain and they bring an arm in bands of 50 look at how this guy suffered in military school and stood before a prophet and he downplayed their training with one shout from heaven fire came down and roasted all of them they brought another ban again the third ban begged they said we are military people but we're not stupid brothers and sisters nothing this powerful listen nothing this powerful should easily go out of fashion Christianity is fading away because the the wow factor the attracting factor in the faith work is dwindling and fading and what is left are just religious rituals and the celebrating of men as superstars and God is tired of that there needs to be a definite restoration of power the power of the Holy Spirit the power of the Holy Spirit I'm not even talking of your ability to heal everything 
Let's even say you just obtain the grace to heal cancer alone. That you can come up and say any other thing I've not caught the revelation. But if it is cancer, forward march. Let me tell you, you will weary yourself like Moses from morning till night. Because you will see a cue that unifies both rich and poor. Male and female. People will travel from every place and they will come. That they have learned that God is with you. There are names. There are titles, there are legends and tales of strength, but only a Shua will reign forever. To his kingdom there will be no end. Hear me, in the name of Jesus, if there is anyone here under the sound of my voice and it is part of your prophetic destiny to carry this healing anointing. I stand right now and I stretch my hands. Wherever you are, may that mantle begin to locate you now. May that mantle begin to locate you now. The mantle that grants you the grace to validate the death, the burial and the resurrection of Jesus. Obtain that grace now. Hear me, hear me. I can tell you the truth. Mantles do not leave the earth. Every mantle you see in the Bible and every mantle you see in modern history is still hovering around the earth, waiting for aligned vessels. And God is crying in these days. This is the sound of the spirit that Easter should not just be a time of blind celebration, but for, for, for God's sake, that someone's life can begin to cry Maranatha come healing grace come healing grace come Lord Jesus come Lord Jesus dominion over wicked spirits that cut short the life of people and plague their bodies thank God for the little we are doing but for God's sake let's contend for higher levels he showed me a river. He measured a thousand cubits. It was to my feet. A thousand cubits. It was to my knees. A thousand cubits. It was to my loins. And a thousand cubits, an overflowing river. A thousand cubits. There are kings. There are kingdoms, there are mountains and there are thrones, but only a Shua will reign forever, to his kingdom there will be no with my life that Lord whatever it will take to hold superior dimensions of your power for my generation I will pay that price in Christ I will obtain grace to press because I will never join a queue that keeps misrepresenting the power and the potential of the kingdom ladies and gentlemen we must graduate from falling down and shouting in church to producing valid results that demonstrate the resurrection of christ the bible says and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection and great grace great grace great grace that was what was responsible great grace great grace 
that people will run to your house while you are sleeping they are patient we are not here to wake you we know God is with you we will wait until you wake up because we know that one declaration from you can rewrite the realities of our life this is not human worship the Bible calls God being embodied in a man a mystery of godliness it's a great is a mystery of godliness that God became a man seen of men and angels he said as my father has sent me so send I you the gospel was never supposed to be this difficult to communicate the difficulty is the alternative we try to bring to explain away the absence of authentic results hear me what do you tell a woman who comes to church with her child because you told them that Jesus heals how do you explain a woman who comes to church say by 7 a.m. in the morning for a service that will start at 3 or 4 and she sits down with the expectation that Jesus will meet her child do you know what will happen to that woman as she drags that child back home and they say you went to church in the morning some even take a step of faith to take the child out from the hospital and say after all you're on your way dying but I hear Christians say Jesus resurrected let us bring him there this is not about the issue of being called into the healing ministry or not except you hate Jesus you should contend for the healing anointing in this end time more love more power more of you in my life more love more power more of you in my life let that be the prayer of a generation that the average lifespan in Africa last I checked is 48 years that means the moment you get to 48 years in Africa most likely it's countdown for you where is that here and yet respectfully speaking we are all here men and women of God believe us all kinds of books the Bible we have, we keep printing it in different versions for better understanding. I'm not being sarcastic. Let me tell you, anybody who loves God must throw away that arrival mentality and we must begin to cry in all honesty because thank God for the little we have done. And I say little without a sense of exaggeration. Relative to what we need to bring as we usher in the return of Christ, let God be true. There are virgin dimensions of power we are yet to get to. And we must learn how to hold on to the four horns of the altar and cry until mantles are falling here tonight. Once again. Anointings are falling here tonight. Once again. Races are falling here tonight. Once again. Races are falling here tonight. a couple that greatly mentored me in the area of healing through their materials Charles and Francis Hunter and I remember they wrote a book a little book it was captured in a statement that one manifestation of healing 
is worth a thousand sermons. I agree. I agree. I agree that one person rising from a wheelchair is greater than many series put together. No wonder the Bible calls men living epistles that a man's life can be a sermon and it can preach more articulately than any other person regardless your level of oratory. I taught you here commanding salvation over territories. Listen to the message. I told you that results are evangelists. There is a sermon only results can preach. There are certain sermons that only results can preach. Results are preachers. Results are preachers. Healing miracles are preachers. Supernatural manifestations of prosperity can preach the gospel. Breakthrough, favor, these manifestations of the kingdom, they are preachers. My assignment and your assignment is to be worthy conduits that the power of God can flow through us to the nations like a river. A few, a few weeks from now, when UK bringing the gospel with the power of God among the many tens of thousands of people that are coming are people who are sick, people who are oppressed, hoping that these people coming will not be noisemakers again, recycling our expectations and not making them granted. Do you know what Jesus did to the fig tree? that had leaves to attract him and not produce fruit, he did not advise it, he caused it. My prayer for myself all the time is that I do not become a man of God who attracts people, proposing many things that I cannot defend. Listen, every revelation God gives you before you start preaching it, stay with God to access the grace dimension of that revelation. The things we have seen, the things we have heard, the things our hands have handled of the word of life. It says that is what we preach. I am not ashamed of the gospel the apostle said for it is the power. Beyond a message, it is the power. I don't want to just talk about a healing Jesus. I want to demonstrate a healing Jesus. I don't just want to talk about a prospering Jesus. I, I don't just want to talk about a delivering Jesus. Patriarchs of faith who have joined the cloud of witnesses now, like Reinhard Bonke, they would come and say, Africa shall be saved. And with the simplicity of their voices and their body language, they moved across nation to nation and they, nothing could resist them. They demonstrated, they gave witness to the resurrection. I once listened to a message by T.L. Osborne and almost half of the message I was in tears. I was not in tears in self-condemnation. I just cried and I said, God, what is this? What happened to us? At what point did we miss it? Was it poor mentorship? Was it inadequate consecration? What, at what point? Let me tell you this. Transformation will always be faster when there are models that now exemplify what people should enter into. For as long as we still tell people, be this, there has to be men who personify these possibilities. And we thank God for people in the body of Christ who at least have been able to show a roadmap. But I submit to you with every sense of responsibility, bragging at our current result will be a mockery of the integrity of God. Because I submit to you, there is still a long journey. For as long as there are cancer people dying, the doctors now depend on us for support and we are disappointing them. We mock and insult doctors and say, doctors, you are useless. We believe in the power of God. The doctors have said, okay, we agree we are limited. Come and help us. They give us access to hospitals to pray for the sick. Even against the ethics of their practice because we propose to them that we have superior power and yet we've not been able to demonstrate it. And with gallancy, they tell us, get out, keep arguing your case while we do our best as instruments of mercy. It is my prayer that my generation 
will be able to stand and lift among the many graces we are not called to do everything but this healing banner not to brag and say i had a meeting five people were healed what does that mean glory be to god but relative to what when a student scores five over hundred did he pass dear lecturer please answer me did he pass no five percent is wonderful you didn't get zero but you still failed they will categorize you together with the person who did not even write the exam has seen no ear has heard what God has prepared for me so I submit to his work in me till Christ be formed in me no I has seen no ear has heard what God has prepared for me so I submit to his work in me till Christ be formed in me till Christ be formed in me till Christ be formed in me I'm forced to recall the vision that I had many years ago and in that vision, I was in an environment, it was a night time, just like it is when it's night or when there's a curfew. And I saw all kinds of sick people, terrible diseases. And they were lying there. You know how, especially in parts of the north, you just have people who have all kinds of sicknesses. And they were there. And I came, I was heartbroken. And I began to sob, to weep, to look at these people because I felt very helpless. I had the heart and the compassion to help them. But the grace was not there. And then I heard a voice and that voice spoke to me and it says, heal them. You see, like many of you have slept and seen yourselves in crusade grounds. Many of you have slept and seen yourselves healing. But don't let it die as a dream. It is destiny calling on you. It is a mantle revolving around you and saying, when will you respond? You think God has the time to waste those kinds of dreams? Why do you think it keeps coming? Man of God, don't be celebrating mundane things. Whereas there are superior demands in the spirit. You go to bed and there you see someone on a wheelchair watching you. And then you try to pray for the person. I will never forget many years ago. I went to pray for someone in Zaria then. And I sincerely, they gathered as a family. The person had a problem with the back and was, you know, grounded on a wheelchair. And they came believing. They had heard of the little that God was doing. And they truly believed. Suspended everything because I was coming to their house. So you could not say they did not have faith. What then is faith? They believed. And I preached a very sound message. You could make a series out of that message. Powerful message like many of us keep doing. And then when I was done, when it was now time to give witness to the resurrection, I was there and I believed, well, I don't know now, but I believed that I had faith. Except that I stood before that crippled person and I said in the name of Jesus with every ounce of faith in me and absolutely nothing happened. Not many people will be honest to tell you this. As men of God, we like sounding as if everybody... Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I felt so bad that day. How could I preach so much? Imagine the miracle imagine such a powerful sermon sound exegesis of healing now the moment had come to give witness does it look like what is still happening today in many of our circles when it has to do with teaching what God can do we have done well he can heal when it has to do with singing it my goodness when it has to do with acting drama of healing you know, 
youth groups and teenage groups in churches act drama so beautifully you would see how jesus resurrected and how satan is falling up and down except that unfortunately that is acting for many people when the sick become healed when the oppressed become delivered when we make isaiah 61 come alive again ladies and gentlemen there will be a wave of civilization that the church will reintroduce i hope you know it is results that define civilizations i give you an instance it was the discovery of the internet that literally brought another kind of civilization now electric cars are coming is that true yes now virtual reality and all kinds of things the metaverse con uh, concept internet of things all of these advancements in technology they are literally civilization does not just happen it's a man's courage backed up by his intention an individual can get up like one person got up introduced the internet and now most of our children and teenagers do not even know what a typewriter looks like you see little children and all they know is to flip they don't know how to punch they don't know what keypads look like that is how believers can reintroduce a civilization. That a day will come when many people will run and say, come, let us go to the house of the Lord. Does that look like a scripture you have read? That it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted above every other mountain. Listen, it's more than prosperity talk. This is beyond money. We're talking of intangible things that money cannot buy like the power of god he said the money perish with you for you think you can buy the gift of god do you know how many people can carry their lives earning literally their lives earning they diagnose someone and say we need 20 30 million and that man has saved all his money representing all his labor and in one year it disappears and it's not like there is a guarantee for healing and while that is happening sadly and respectfully we men of god i come back to us again we're here jumping and bragging on stage whereas there are people dying and you see the real referee is not us the real referee are the unbelievers the unbelievers are the umpire they compare what we are saying versus what is producing from our lives and they say no this does not add up but the good news is that this will be one Easter that will be with a difference because for you your assignment tonight is not only to celebrate the ceremony of Easter but to know that there is a mantle that is looking for you there is a mandate crying for your destiny to become a validator God is depending on your witness the world has it have a right to say we lied do you know that when Jesus resurrected remember one of the synoptic accounts when they discovered that he was alive the Bible says they paid people and they said please make sure you say he's not alive satan is still paying people today paying systems and structures to say jesus is not alive but our assignment is not just to sing up from the grave our assignment is not just to celebrate the ceremony i'm yours jesus i'm yours forever I'm yours, Jesus, I'm yours forevermore, whoever you want to heal, Lord, you can heal through me, whoever you want to lift, Lord, you can lift. In the next two minutes I want us to pray wherever you are let this be your Easter gift to your destiny I want you to cry to the God of heaven and say the grace component that makes to be a validator of your resurrection I obtain someone open your mouth and pray 
Shalanda Braska Varatos Kapari Katosha Vrendes Kemash Embra Katapa Katabaratos Kapadekatos Yata The grace, the grace to give evidence to the resurrection. The grace. Someone pray, someone pray. Father, I am available. Let it fall like it was in the day of Pentecost upon my life, upon my singing ministry, upon the word ministry you have given me, upon my business. Let me become a validator of your resurrection, not just a celebrator of your resurrection. Pray one minute. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, our time is gone. Let me say this one time and then I'll just speak over those who are trusting God. We have to do this at least to honor the resurrection of Jesus. Let me repeat the last statement that I made that our mandate is not complete if we only celebrate the resurrection the greater task is to be validators of his resurrection by revealing the kingdom the power the glory of this jesus apostle peter on the day of pentecost while he was preaching the first sermon after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, he said, this same Jesus that you have been crucified, that you crucified, has now been exalted as Lord and Christ. The Bible says when they heard, they were caught to the heart. And they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? He said, repent for the remission of your sins and you shall receive of this spirit. He says, for the promise is unto you and to your children, your children's children, as many as are far off even as the Lord shall call. Let me take a minute out of our limited time already to just speak over those who are trusting God for a miracle. In one minute, I'd like you to lay your hands where you are trusting God for healing or your hand on your chest if you are standing for someone or trusting God for any kind of miracle. Let me just speak over your life to honor this day. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare right now, every devil of darkness that has plagued anyone watching by television watching by the internet from our zaria family our global family all the overflows down to this auditorium in the name of jesus christ and by the power that raised christ from the dead i command that spirit to give way now i decree and declare every sickness heart conditions be healed now yeah. cancer be healed now yeah. HIV be healed now yeah. kidney conditions lung conditions be healed now yeah. blood related conditions be healed now yeah. eye conditions be healed now yeah. Ear conditions be healed now. Everyone here who has been bound by any spirit, I lose you now. I lose your family now. I lose every member of your family now. Anyone here and those watching who has been appointed unto death, in the name of Jesus Christ, we declare the fullness of your days you fulfill. Yeah. 
and anyone here who is particularly in ministry serving the purposes of the kingdom from tonight I forbid you from being barren as you communicate the gospel in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ with great power you will bear witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ genotypes every negative genotype be changed right now in Jesus name barrenness be healed now hepatitis be healed now pile be healed now peptic ulcer be healed now bone related conditions be healed now those who are watching from any hospital or any point where you have a patient let the power of God on this resurrection day move through the airwaves and touch that person right now in the name of Jesus Christ now let me pray for you for all of you who are here from today I stand in the name of Jesus and I empower your hands I release you as proof producers I release you as miracle workers I release you as signs and wonders in ministry in business in career receive it in the name of Jesus Christ listen from today you will no longer wait until you come for koinonia become an extension of these possibilities in the name of Jesus Christ listen let me challenge you when you go back home go and meet those who are sick and take a step of faith and lay your hands on them don't say I cannot do it lay your hands if your loved ones tell you just remember I have been raised up with Christ just remember the Spirit of God lives in me that the resurrected King has resurrected everything in me I am you are an ambassador a validator a witness carry this mentality today hallelujah and as you do that in the name of Jesus may the Lord use you to rewrite the history of the lives of men The last thing I'll do when we're done, you need Jesus. Your relationship with Jesus is the most important component. I told you here, there are people whilst you heard me teach, whilst you heard me preach, the Lord began to speak to you, letting you know that you need Jesus. Let me your attention for a minute. Hear me. It is a terrible thing to reject Jesus, especially with the knowledge to give someone an opportunity before we wrap up tonight wherever you are very boldly without any sense of fear or shame I want you to leave your seat and come and stand here very quickly I'm going to count one to five Jesus is calling you run like there's fire on the mountain come and stand I begin my counting one two the rest on the ashes of defeat the resurrected King is resurrecting me. Come, Your name come to Jesus. at my little daughter come and join them Jesus loves little children adults all kinds of people come if you are coming please come quickly I'm about to leave them to pray Jesus is giving you a new beginning what an Easter gift what an honor what what a gift to the King of Kings come he's ready to give you a new beginning Apostle I do not know if I'm saved or not you can have such a reality as the assurance of salvation Come to Jesus. And those who are connecting, 
across the globe here is an opportunity to make Jesus Lord even if you are following as a way of rebroadcast Jesus is still giving you an opportunity right here right now come the resurrected King is resurrecting say this after me all of you who have come I salute your courage listen everyone who comes to Jesus the Bible declares that he will in no wise cast you away thank you for your courage and for making this decision lift your right hand if you can high above your head as a sign of surrender and say this after me say Lord Jesus I declare that I love you with all my heart I believe that you died for me I believe that you rose again for my justification tonight on this Easter night I make Jesus my Savior my Lord and my King I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from today I am a child of God I go forward ever and backward never amen keep your glorious hands lifted father thank you for these precious people by the authority of scripture I declare your sins forgiven in the name of Jesus I call you from hence bona fide recipients of the life of God I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over your life I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit may you be grounded and established in righteousness and I declare that you go from glory to glory and grace to grace in Jesus mighty name we pray now very quickly I want you to please follow the uh, counselors they are by my right which will be your left you have a word a quick word dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua Salmon. and that is i want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.